Jason Satterland here, and as you can tell, I may be looking a little worse for wear. I got I got these things they call bags. There's one here, and I'm starting to develop another one over here. Actually, I got two on this side, I noticed this morning. That's because it's just been the last three days filming out here in this park a storm. of things that I, I wanted to tell you today about shooting a storm like this they're kind of hard and very difficult to do especially physically well the first thing is if you're going to show rain I would not use a little garden hose that's just not going to do it as you can see it's raining right now and you may not even be able to tell on the camera that's because normal rain is kind of thin and wispy you need big fat movie rain We hooked up to a fire hydrant, that's why we chose this location. Ran fire hose over here and we rained it and it was thick and wet and sloppy rain and it shows up great on camera. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you're gonna create some sort of weather, you can have wind, you can blow people with fans and whatnot, but you need to show something in the air because if you just have nothing but a fan, a lot of times the wind won't even read. So putting anything into the air, bits or particles or dust in the air is great. Now, Fuller's Earth is something you can use on movie sets and it looks great on film, but it sucks to work with. It's got the consistency of hot chocolate powder. It's, and if you've ever taken a spoonful of that stuff and put it in your mouth and inhaled, that's generally what it's like working with Fuller's Earth. So <clears throat> think about it, when your actors are out in front of the camera and you're pelting them with Fuller's Earth, you may have some issues, especially if they're wearing contacts or they're trying to say lines and they're getting that stuff in their throat. It's, it can be kind of bad. It can also wreak havoc on your camera. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. 